come and tell us that IOU's content is so much, it is so rich. So, so the agenda for today is, uh, first of all, I have to, uh, it will, I will welcome you to IOU. So I would like to welcome you to IOU. For those of you who don't know IOU, uh, it is uh, an online university which was founded by Dr. Bilal Phillips. This university was founded in 2007 and it has accreditation in the Gambia. The motto of the university is changing the nation through education. Today we will have two speakers to speak on our topic and uh, we will have Dr. Uh, we will have Brother Tawhid Noman, who is based in in Canada. Uh, Brother Tawhid is a is a is an International Open University PhD candidate. He's a retired Toronto District School Board educator. He has worked with Canadian-based nonprofit organizations supporting global projects, especially here in Africa. He will be giving us a motivational talk and an inspirational talk, inshallah. Some of you may already know him. This is not his first time to present to IOU Ugandan students. So uh, briefly, let me give you an overview of IOU in Uganda. Uh, so this is the, the introduction I was talking about, the introduction of IOU. Maybe I didn't talk about the... The, uh, when he, when the university started, it expanded to 224 countries. It only started with Islamic studies, but right now it has other departments like Islamic banking and finance, psychology, education, information technology, business administration, Islamic studies, and Arabic. So the university expanded and the accreditation of International Open University is, is by the Gambian National Accreditation and Quality Assurance Authority. So here I, you can see a photo of the graduation ceremony which happened in Kenya on the 25th of Feb, 2023. We hope that we will also have one in Uganda soon, inshallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, we received a recognition for our efforts with the One Mass project in Uganda, where we were awarded as the, the Muslim Startup Excellence Award for 2024. Uh, this award was delivered to us and we received it at our learning center, Alhamdulillah. This is just a testament to show that people are out there, the community appreciates uh, what we do to support students who cannot afford higher education. IOU gives the least tuition fee, charges the least tuition fees compared to any other university. And for those who can't afford, IOU still gives them scholarships. So I will introduce you briefly to the IOU's learning center in Uganda. The, the learning center is called Lifetime Innovation Learning Center. This center provides internet and computer access to students who visit it. And with support from donors like uh, Brother Tawhid that supported the students, the center also distributes gadgets, learning gadgets to students who are very far, like uh, students who are in uh, other parts of the country, like the Eastern, Eastern side in Bali, it is too far for them to come to Kampala and access these services. So we do offer those opportunities. And inshallah, those who haven't received, they will also receive. And these gadgets, we hope that they are used only for education purposes. So we will be giving them out. And they will go to a leader of these students who will then... Uh, distribute them among us, the students depending on their need so we we would like yes, those recipients to know that these devices are not personal 
uh, equipment, they are just meant for educational purposes only. Uh, this is the academic calendar for spring 2024, which will run from March to August. Uh, I just want you to note the important dates on this calendar. Of course, you know when the semester started, it started on the 1st of March, but on the 9th of May, we will have midterm exams. Then another due day, another important date will come on the 1st of June when students need to submit all their assignments. Then the final important date of the semester will be the 1st of August when the final exams begin. So please, whatever you do, make preparations to meet uh, and uh, to meet those uh, deadlines and, and you do not miss any of those important dates. It is very important that you do your midterm exams during that period of 9th May. Of course, there is another period of 14th June for those who may have missed, that is called the late period. But people who do exams in the late period normally miss out they 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 get a penalty of 15% deduction of their marks. So please avoid doing exams in the late period so that you do not lose your marks. So this is how exams are done, both midterm and end of the term examination. They are done at the learning center. You come, the internet is, is available and the and the gadgets are available, so you only come, present your ID as an IOU student, and then take your exam. The te exam's timing is a bit flexible. It is this, you as the student who sets your own exam timetable. So you choose days which are convenient for you to come and do your examinations. Of course, they are doing exams at the center will also involve uh, will also involve the center fees. Uh, some students are exempt, of course, but the majority of the students will have to do that. So uh, the other point I would we want to talk about today is the community service hours which are required for a student before graduation. You cannot get your academic documents if you do not have the community service hour. So this community service hour is compulsory for all the students. You can see from the table, um, for a four-year bachelor's degree program, you require 216 community service hours. So these community service hours can be done both online and offline. You see the, the in the photo, Next to the table, you see IOU students at one of the promotional events. And those students from that event, they earn their community service hours. On that event alone, they earned uh, like 10 hours because it was a 10-hour event. So if you want to get, uh, for you to begin community service hours, uh, first of all, you, you have to be in your you need to have completed 12 courses. That means you should be in your second year. Uh, you can do the community service hours on ground by helping the local community, Muslim community. This could be a masjid. This could be even your, your, your neighborhood, the LC. We call them the LC. You can help them to do community service work. But the condition is these community service hours should be done under supervision. So this is why we I'm, I'm showing you these two forms here. This form, the first form is the community service supervision evaluation form. This is where you, your supervisor has to sign, the one who supervises that work. Uh, it is both, uh, you can check whether you are doing it online and on the ground. So at the learning center, in the table on the table next to the form, you can see that we normally have holiday computer training programs, 
and in these programs you can still do your community service hours online and both offline because some of these programs happen online actually most of them happen online so you can get in touch with the learning center if you are now eligible for the community service hours and then you do that um then finally i just briefly want to show you the evaluation a scheme of iou that the pass mark you need to get is only 50 percent and for you to reach that 50 percent you can clearly see from the table you need each module you complete you need to do the module test which contribute 15 percent the midterm exams 30 percent final exams 40 percent then your assignment contributes 50 percent 15 percent so so for you to be able to achieve this you need to take advantage of uh, how you can get support from your lecturers how you interact with your lecturers if there's a, uh, something you didn't understand in the module they can try to explain it to you they can try to get for you how to they can try to guide you on how to get the correct answers so this is where our one of our speakers today will talk about for scholarship student and failure to get this pass mark leads to a fine and the fine is 30 dollars so that means if you fail to pass at least four of your semester exams you will be fined you will pay you will be we will pay a fine of 30 dollars and if you fail again in the uh, following semester then you lose your scholarship altogether and if you if you lose your scholarship and you are terminated from your scholarship that means that you now have to pay your own tuition in order to continue your studies so uh back to the back to our menu so i've already given you the overview of iou in uganda for the part of introduction each I'm, I'm requesting that each member on call can type their full name and where they are from in the <laughs> chat so that we get to know you so uh, that means we are going to the next agenda item which is the uh, invitation of our guest speaker dr uh, brother tawhid noman to come and address us on the topic uh, uh, building an online learning community so brother tawhid you are most welcome <clears throat> over to you. i'll stop sharing okay uh so let me go share screen before i start talking opening my file you can all see my screen right You yes, can you expand can it to be full screen. Okay. Slide share. Uh, press, let me just go through. <clears throat> Slide share. Okay. Uh, From the beginning, okay. Is it okay or is it better? Yes, you can be able to see. Okay, you can see now, can you? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa shafu al-anbiya wa alihi wa sahbihi wa azma'in bi rahmatika rahman rahimin. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي respected brothers sisters students and the audience this is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has gathered us for the cause of ilm via our Elim Institute International Open University. The topic 
that I am given to speak on building and engaging the online learning community. So I will speak some of the strategies. Five of them I chose. Can you all hear me, brothers and sisters? Okay. okay, good. Now, these five strategies that I'm talking about, starting number one is interactive and collaborative learning, focusing on encourage active participation of the students through the discussion, the group projects or the peer reviews. These are the samples doing the interactive learning, which can foster a sense of community and mutual support among the students. Point number two, focusing on gamification, which is acknowledging students' sense of accomplishment. In other words, virtually motivate them, reward them, such as badges, reward points, leaderboards, to motivate the students with the incentives. The next point is regular communication. Being students and the teachers or the support staff, we should maintain a steady flow of communication through the announcement, newsletters, personal outreach, keeping the students informed and engaging with the community is very crucial. Now, IOU definitely in the online platform, things are very organized, meaning the professors have their lectures ready in three modes. There is video lesson, there is audio lesson, and there are PDF notes. Now, the difference between online and offline, in other words, online and on-site, and on-site teachers and the instructors sitting at the same time, there are physical interaction, eye-to-eye -eye contact, teachers are speaking, students are listening, and during the instruction or at the end of the instruction, students have questions, they ask the instructor or the teachers or the professors, and on the spot, the answers are there. And from one person's question, definitely the other people can also, having the same question, get the answers. When in online community, we have a discussion forum. And what happens? Globally, our students sit at their own available time. And there is a time difference when there is midnight in one country, there is midday in another country. And most of our IOU students are either house wife or working people, not the regular age. There is professional doctors, lawyers, teachers. There are retired professionals who are attending the classes at their own time, at their own pace. So what happens? If somebody has a question, going module by module, what happens? They have questions. So what is their choice? They communicate either the discussion forum or they can communicate through the WhatsApp, through the email. Sometimes due, due to the time difference, due to the network problem, I'm sharing my experience. I have seen that sometime, let's say my professor on vacation, He's gone to Africa and there is no net. Or it could be also network failure in an advanced country like Canada. So questions, even if they want to ask, they have to wait. Instructors, even if they want to answer on the spot, they cannot. They do it afterward. But there is help always available for the students such as on the spot when they log in, there are help, there is help desk email. So 
for online communication from IOU, all the doors are open. While due to the time difference and due to the different timing we sit down, it is not like online, I'm sorry, uh, offline or on site, on the spot sometime, we may not get the professor or we may not get the answers of the questions. So we have to be patient, my dear brothers and sisters. As a student, we have to be very patient. Second thing is that time is a factor. If there are 20 weeks in the semester, it is broken down, first 10 weeks, people finish for each course. If there are five courses in the semester, I would suggest for 15 module, they finish it before the midterm review starts. From my experience, I noticed when I guidance counsel, some of the guidance counsel, some of the students in Bangladesh or Canada or even Africa, sometimes people wait for the last moment, which is not a good idea. So for logging in, if it is monitored by the student chairman locally or the charity leaders in the hierarchy that who is logging and who is not. It is very important, my dear brothers, that if the students do not sit down daily on a regular basis, planning their time, they cannot pass. And these are the people they have to realize they are getting tuition-free scholarship, free gadgets. So planning and setting the time, sitting every day is very important. Number four point is professional development opportunities. Again, I, on, on behalf of IUU, the lecturers are always speaking on different topics. Our scholars or professors like DVC or the department head or the dean, it's a good idea always. The students should listen from the YouTube workshops, webinars, the networking events that is provided from the higher level. And students should be familiar also with the curriculum, the course contents inside the courses. They should thoroughly read or study or listen audio or the video lectures of the professors. Time-wise, before they sit down for the module test. I have seen sometimes students sit down last moment, which is not a good idea. So the professional development opportunities, again, giving us opportunities, motivating our students to stay engaged within the community here. When I say, or we say within the community means there should be always a network between the local students, meaning the Strong students should be paired with the weak students. Students going to the same bachelor like business or IT. Two students studying the same program on a regular basis can sit down together, do the cooperative learning. It helps motivating each other. It helps the strong student help the weak students. And it also helps the students to take their responsibilities. Talking about the community hours, again, I have seen in some countries, based on my experience working as a guidance teacher, that not all of them, some of them when they get everything free for granted, when I mean free for granted, tuition free, scholarship, and then free gadgets, Sometimes they ask for free data. And these things must be worked out locally, the data I'm talking about. And when you have the gadgets, whether it's a smartphone or the laptop, definitely there is certain amount of data is needed. The student must consult with the local charity leader or the country representative and the student chairman, how to solve this problem, problem locally. Time management is an issue. Data management is an issue. 
network is an issue. Network can fail, especially in third world countries, in Africa and in Asia, people who are in the village. We have to consider all these things in order to grow as a current bachelor student to the future leader or future professionals. My fifth strategic point is accessibility and inclusivity. The two major points is ensuring that the learning community online is accessible to all students, including those with disabilities, fostering an inclusive environment where every student feels valued and supported. There are students who have learning disability. There are students, you know, we have to keep in mind, IUU students, average age is more than 40. There are a student 20 plus to there are a student like me, 60 plus. So when anybody has a issues like disabilities, meaning our instructors definitely should have some knowledge about how to cope, what is the policy for the disabled students. There is accommodation I'm talking about. There is modification I'm talking about. When I say accommodation, there is instructional accommodation. There is environmental accommodation. There is assessment accommodation. All these kinds of accommodation definitely should be there between the teachers and the students. And when students have issues like that, students can communicate with the instructor and let the instructor know, you know, for the accommodation. Like example, some people might need extra time. Definitely, he has to prove why he does need it if it is a medical issue, disable issue, definitely there is doctor's letter could be provided to the instructor and our IOU has a policy, they should go by the policy. So students should know learning and teaching the policy of IOU. Will IOU foster an inclusive environment where every student feels valued and supported? The next point is, Integrating these five strategies and leveraging the data effectively, we can build a thriving online learning community that engages and motivate our students. For motivation, I'm talking about from experience, students in Africa or Asia, wherever we are, there should be regular meeting with the students and their local leaders, the charity leaders, and the charity leaders should be connected to the student chairman and the country representative. It is, everything is planned already, but sometime I notice the new people from the students position of responsibility to the charity leaders, they, are not up to date or they are not on time. So this is just a reminder. Now, uh, next thing I'm talking about some online study tips. Again, I repeat, stud students should study, not alone, but at least in groups or pair, whether it's a masjid basis or learning center basis, given the gadgets, setting the schedule, Follow the IUE calendar of all the due dates of the test, assignments, exams to finish on time, whether it's a module test or midterm exam or final exam or the writing assignment. I have noticed, my dear brothers and sisters, students have a tendency to wait for the last moment and the students come with an excuse, oh, I don't have a data. I'm out of data, so you know I missed the date. Again, IUU has late assignment with 15% penalty. Now we have to understand, the students must understand that if I submit things late and I lose my marks, it will affect my passing marks. 
And if I don't get passing marks in all the courses, I'm going to lose my tuition free status. And again, I'm getting gadgets. If I fail, you know, this gadget is not given to play games. This gadget is given to use it on a daily basis to study three to four hours for five courses to pass in each semester. Each course has only 20 weeks to finish in five months, having 30 modules. So students must plan ahead of time that if I have to finish 15 modules for five courses, 75 modules, in 10 weeks, I have to divide it. How many modules I need to finish on a daily basis? Every week, if they have seven days, we're not suggesting they have to study seven days, at least five days, routine-wise, sharing the gadget, going to the learning center or the local masjid or the NGO, sitting down after for the salat with the breakfast until the Zohar time. One student can use the gadget. The next student after Zohar salat, afternoon and evening, can easily finish one module for each course. And these are the students will be ahead of the game. They will not or they cannot fail. Similarly, my dear brothers, each module has five questions. They have to develop the strategy, meaning writing the test, the module test before writing the test. If they did not study the PDF notes or did not listen to the professor's lectures, either audio or video, one time, and then did not review second time, it'll be difficult to get 80% to 100% or four out of five questions to five out of five questions. And again, the people who will get 60 to 80% in each module for 15 module for each course, keep in mind, my dear students, these are the questions will be repeated in the midterm exam, at least 60%. And they will be just change the order for multiple choice. Let's say in the test, the order was A, B, C, D, E to find the answer of a question. In the final or midterm exam, the order will be changed, meaning you have to know the contents. And if you review again before the midterm exam and the final exam, the modules I'm talking about, there is no way you'll fail. Everybody will pass. So module questions to get four out of five in average, or three out of five is very important. And this will affect their midterm exam marks and the final exam marks. And there is a study review before each exam. They need to sit, the students need to sit before the exams, review the study questions or find the answers to the study questions and review the module questions. Everything will be online. When you log on, after every study period and writing the test, everything is online. All you need to do, plan your time, be honest, finish your reading on time, and write the test on time. For the writing assignment, similarly, my dear brothers or students, brothers and sisters, how you can get the help from the course instructors. As I mentioned, there are discussion forum online. There are courses, textbooks, materials. Whenever you log in to study on the daily basis, check through the message, go through the discussion forum. See what the other students or your professors or the instructors, what they mention. Their message, if you read it, maybe one person is curious or have anxiety or the worry about something that could be implying or, you know, applying on you. That means you, by checking those discussion forum, putting your own issues or looking at other issues, Many, many 
issues are solved there. So even if you don't find as a student, the professors in person, but discussion forum, online communication, you must communicate. And I'm pretty sure all the instructors are very, very knowledgeable, responsible to answer in the discussion forum. At the same time, students should have email or WhatsApp, whatever is the department policy. It is all mentioned in the course outline. So every student must read through the course outline. Who is my instructor? What is his email? What is his WhatsApp number? Whenever I am in trouble, last moment before exam or submitting my research paper or essays or thesis, whatever, am I getting communicated with him? It's a two-way responsibility, my dear students. It's not only the instructor's responsibility, it is also your responsibility. So, as I mentioned, there are module by module, audio and the video lecture. Why there is audio and video, we know that if the instructor is women, students are men, they don't want to watch the video, they can watch, they can listen to the audio and must read the PDF notes. For each module, these two, by reading PDF notes or listening audio and then review before the test, there's no way you'll fail. Everybody will pass. And as I mentioned, if you want to go individual for your homework, yes, it is your individual responsibility. But to sit down on a regular basis with a strong partner for the new student should sit with the old student should consult with the senior students. Every district or the village, there are third year, fourth year students. There are alumnus or alumni. Who would be the resources for that area to support the new students, to support the charity leader who is not an IOE student, but he is probably the local country's university student. He must know he must monitor, he must meet at least once a week to check or monitor, are the students logging in daily? Are the students using the gadgets? He could check asking the students, please send me your screenshot of five courses, latest module, what you have done, just send it to me. And then from there, it makes easy, he knows that students are up to date. If he doesn't do it, students who are irresponsible, because as I mentioned, when people get things for granted, they don't realize, they said, okay, I have enough time, I will sit down the last moment and I will finish it. So they start cramming, studying 10 modules in one night, wake up for the whole night, and then tired, exhausted, mess up in the exam or the test. That's why my dear brothers and sisters from the bottom as a student to the top student chairman, country representative, local charity leader, everybody has to be in communication online, logging in, checking locally are the students taking the responsibility, finishing their module studies, writing their module test, are ready for the exam review, are ready for the exam study. I you already maintain, maintain all these things and give a uh, YouTube uh, every, uh, at the beginning of the semester, there are orientation from IUU. But the question is, are all the students watching? If not, please do not miss those things. Every strategy from IUU, there is available study skills. There are video, exam studies, strategies, there are videos, writing assignments, 
there are videos. So before you do these things, my dear brothers, students I'm talking about, the beginners, the new students, what a great opportunity you have getting free education, bachelor's and master. You know how much it costs in the Western world, Canada, America, England? $20,000 to $25,000 a year. Four years, $100,000. IUU is giving you standard, international, four years bachelor's in two languages, English and Arabic. Realize, my dear brothers, is your opportunity, if you abuse it, then you will be the loser. So for the course issue, make sure whenever there is questions, connect with the instructor, be in discussion forum, whether it's an issue for module tests or exam or study review, you have questions, please contact your instructor by his WhatsApp, or email or discussion forum. And respect, respect, respect your colleagues, student chairman, country rep, charity leader, and your instructors, please. So to get the tech support and the network issues, again, IOU has 24 hours online tech support. There is help desk email, me as a student, at the age of 55 plus to 63, help desk is a great help for me. Whenever I couldn't find my professors in vacation time going from Malaysia to Africa, for example, help desk cooled me down, brought my stress down, located, where is my professors? Why, you know, I cannot get him. Excellent ladies are sitting there, sisters are sitting there in the help desk. So, my dear brothers, patience is the name of the game for higher studies from Islamic Online University, giving us African 1 million student scholarship. It's a great privilege from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for your course academic matter, you either post in discussion forum under each of your course or email and WhatsApp message to your course instructor. And when you don't get a hold of them, leave a message for help desk. Help desk will guide you in the right directions. And go through all the icons when you log in at the bottom screen for whatever issue the icon is there. In the module test, if you feel there is a question error, MCQ, you can even communicate, okay? And again, locally, you have a student chairperson, country representative to get the help by WhatsApp. They're available. Again, I shared my personal experience in this speech. I have been working with Ugandan students from 2021. I hunted myself, students from district to district, Brother Bogere, no. And I told the charity leaders, please get your students IDs, front side, back side, get your students high school mark sheets, and then create a spreadsheet or contact Brother Bogere. He will give you the template, whatever he wants, give it to him ahead of the time. And this is how, mashallah, Brother Bogere, I guess since 2018, maybe before that, he has been working day by day, improving the Ugandan students to get IOU higher education. So from the students level to the charity leaders locally, to the country manager or the country representative and the student chairman, there is hierarchy. We should contact. I'm talking with the students, should contact. Okay. Every week they should meet and emergency, they should contact their agency, charity agency leaders locally. And there are various Ugandan districts where IOU is providing masjid bases 
and from Kampala, there are two centers he's running, you know. And my experience is, you know, this is how I began building masjid, borehole, solar energy, electricity panel, router to arrange the IOE students, you know, getting online studies for one month tuition fee scholarship and provided laptops or the gadgets, alhamdulillah. And we are ready as a retired teacher from Canada, America, our brothers and sisters to support the students in Africa who are really serious and the sincere, my dear brothers. And again, sharing my experience from 21 up to now, I call once a week, I talk to the students with their leaders, finding their issues, give them right counseling, collected screenshot myself even some time to check whether really they are sitting on time on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, semester wise to check their progress. Provide them simple writing assignments, coach them online within my time with the time difference of eight hours from between Uganda and the Canada. Just to motivate my dear brothers, to you students, you are our future leaders. The month of Ramadan is coming, my dear brothers. This is the month you gain everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his bounty. You have to do the fasting in this month. At the same time, you have to sit down for your homework. Don't forget, you know, I am fasting. I don't have to study. No, 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 my dear brothers and sisters. Whether we are in the Western world or the Eastern world, Muslim majority country or non-Muslim majority country, this month of blessing, we have to gain things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reading Quran, fasting, doing community service for the local masjid. That doesn't mean that we'll put our study aside. Four weeks, my dear brother, long time, 720 hours. People who would not do their homework in this month of Ramadan, do you think they're going to pass the midterm exam? 30%? No way. So 30% midterm exam and 40% final exam. Total is 70%. I repeat and I remind. Reminder is beneficial. People who sit on time, finish their modules, 15 before midterm exam for each course, and 15, meaning 16 to 30 after midterm exam, and review before the test, these are the people who will be successful. And these are the people, semester by semester, they will finish their four years, and they will be, even some of them, moving to not only finding job, but also going for higher education at master's level at IUU. Some people even will come outside IUU higher studies with scholarship in America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, England, et cetera. And again, for the job seeking, I put some approaches here. Being a third year or fourth year student, you grow your community development responsibility by doing the regular community service. Whether it's a religious center or community centers locally or online, creating opportunity for direct contact with your employers looking or checking the job advertisement, whether it's from IUU, from other agencies, and both public and private employment agencies, utilizing all the private employment opportunities locally on site and globally online. The last slide of my presentation before I take the questions, I promise Ugandan IUU bachelor degree students or alumni as foreigners who consider to come to Canada for higher education, the scholarship, to, and then after passing, settle down in this country and then help their own village. Just like I came from a Bangladeshi village. Now I've been working, alhamdulillah, not only with Bangladeshi village union districts, but also with African districts. My dear brothers and sisters, my future leaders, you are the people who will be doing 
the job we are doing, the job our chancellor is doing, vice chancellor is doing, deputy vice chancellor is doing, department head or the deans are doing. 30 years from now, they will not be here. They will be all gone. You guys will be doing. So my dear brothers, have some vision. Have some ambition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us. I will take the question, my dear brother. Okay, brother, I'm done. Or sister, hey, thank you so much. Me. You're welcome. <clears throat> thank you. We have really benefited, and I'm sure uh, the students have listened to you attentively and carefully. They have picked out uh, important points there. Uh, I would like to announce that Sheikh Raja has also joined us. And he also has a, a, a short presentation to make on the same topic. Uh, for those of you who are not here from the beginning of the session, we said uh, we will have two presenters today presenting on the topic, building an online learning community, and also giving the students tips on seeking help from their lecturers. So Sheikh Raja Yassin is a lecturer from the Department of Islamic Studies at IOU, and he's also a lawyer. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity to invite him to come and make his presentation. Then the final session of the day will be the question and answer session. So anyone who has a question can put it on the chat. And then you can also put the person you want the the to the, the, the presenter you are addressing the question to. If you have a question for me, you can put my name for Brother Tawhid or for Sheikh Raja, inshallah. So Sheikh Raja, you are welcome. And uh, you can begin sharing your screen, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I won't be sharing the, the screen, but yeah, so because we had uh, a problem with our electricity in the morning, so our laptops were dead and I'm actually using my daughter's laptop uh, to, to connect, so uh, I'll just do the word of mouth, inshallah. Okay, uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Wahda, Wasalat, Wasalam, Ala, Mala, Nabi, Yabada, Wabad, Assalam, Alaikum, Warahmatullahi, Wabarakat. Oh, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may His peace and blessings be upon His Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and upon those who followed in His footsteps until the day of Qiyamah. As usual, we start by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us and gave us the gift of Iman, alhamdulillah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has given us the gift of Iman and has given us the opportunity to be seekers of knowledge, alhamdulillah. We thank Allah, the one who created us, made us human beings, and has given us the opportunity to be tulab al-ilm, and not only that, to be amongst the students of this uh, very, very important institution that is the International Open University. And as we can tell, we have these blessings not because we are these intelligent beings or these wealthy beings that it just happened. It is the mercy and the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so each and every day we need to appreciate uh, what we have. Um, I'm supposed to talk about the, um, uh, you know, creating an online community and also the tips on, um, you know, getting help from the lecturers and, and that. So I will try to focus on the second point uh, because I believe, inshallah, my brother Tawheed Norman uh, was able to cover um, most of the points even if I was not here, I think he has the experience and the motivation, alhamdulillah, to do that. So I am confident enough that I don't need to uh, touch on many of these key points because they have already been uh, discussed and touched on. 
So what I'm trying to focus on is from my little experience as uh, an, a, a lecturer uh, at the IOU for the past, alhamdulillah, 11 years, because I joined about 11 years ago, just after graduating myself, and I joined the IOU because of the opportunity of uh, revising what I had learned. So IOU, when I joined, it was that platform where I'm going to teach fiqh, where I'm going to talk, teach aqidah. And these were the subjects that I had been studying um, at the uh, university myself. So it was not only an, a teaching opportunity, it was actually an opportunity to revise what I had learned and also a, an opportunity to increase more from what I had learned, alhamdulillah. Um, I think let me start on the, 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 the unique challenges that we might find, especially where we are in the African continent. And what just happened today for me, I'm currently in South Africa. Uh, I am a resident of South Africa as well as Zimbabwe. My father was from Malawi and my mother was from South Africa and I was born in Zimbabwe. So some, some friends of mine say that I am a colored, I'm a country colored uh, because my father is from Malawi, my mom is of South Africa and I was born in Zimbabwe. Uh, but I think when you look at these three countries, you would find and identify certain similarities. And this would be shared with other countries within our community, within our, our continent. And that is the access to the internet, where we have a, a bit of a challenge. And we also have the issue of the electricity, which is also a bit of a challenge. But Alhamdulillah, in many other places within our continent, you still have people who are con uh, connected to the internet and people who have access to electricity more than maybe other people in the what they call the, the first world countries or something like that. But I think we have this challenge where we have connectivity issues. So how do we deal with that? And I think also IOU was away and is away because it is an online university uh, where you have limited contact between the teachers and the students. So they've tried to come up with mechanisms and these structures where the students would then have access to the internet and access to their teachers. Now, it is now upon the, the student to then say, look, I'm a very busy individual, but I need to have access to the teacher because the teacher has access to some knowledge that I might not have. And I need to tap into that knowledge because it is very easy for us to sit at home because there's no one who is um, you know, pushing us from uh, where we are and say, you know what, I'm going to just read on my own and also then attempt the exams, then I'm going to pass. Alhamdulillah, you're going to pass. Alhamdulillah, you're going to pass. But remember, this type of knowledge that we're seeking, it is an amana. As an amana, they are certain aspects that you are not going to get from a written exam. This is an amana something that we are going to be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. When I came in, Brother uh, Tawheed was focusing on, or was talking on the issue of benefiting from this mark of Ramadan, that this is a blessed mark. And no one is going to come to you in most cases until you read the Quran. Wake up, Hajjud. Do not insult that person. Uh, respond this. The ahadith and the verses that deal with that, they are there. It is now up to us as individuals to then implement and then benefit from those particular situations that we are in. So in a nutshell, guys, what I'm saying is, in terms of getting help from the teachers, you should not wait for the teacher to contact you. We should make the effort to contact the teacher. What we always say with our students is, the seeking of knowledge requires 100%. Whenever it has to be divided, whenever you have to divide this, um, 
equation or this situation between the teacher and the student, 90% and 10%. That is the best you can do when it comes to dividing the issue of seeking knowledge. So who gets the 10%? Who gets the 90%? Who gets the 10%? Who gets the 90%? In other words, who is responsible for the 10% and who is responsible for the 90%? The student is responsible for the 90%. You have the obligation to communicate with your teacher. Because remember, your teacher might have 50, 100, 500 students. If you do not communicate with the teacher, then the teacher would assume that whatever he or she has shared via the public forums, like what we call the Ask the Teacher, like what we call the Student Discussion Forum, like what we call the announcements, he would assume that is sufficient for you. Now, when you do not approach the teacher for you to have that conversation, to identify where you need assistance with, then the teacher is not is just going to leave it, leave it at that. So the onus, the responsibility is upon us as students to make the effort to contact the teacher so that we benefit from the teacher as to how we can benefit from the content that the teacher is responsible for. And also other things that we are responsible for. So let me give an example. There is someone who was my, my student, alhamdulillah, from Canada. And that student was older than me and had more access to the internet, for example, and more access to the luxuries let's call them the luxuries of the world in other words he did not have anything that you would require from the material things for him to contact me so there is no far either there is no benefit from him or for him to actually contact me but he understood that there is a responsibility upon the student to then make contact with the teacher so he made the effort, and because of that effort, we started to interact. And even after he has graduated from the bachelor degree, we are still in contact. Why? Because he realized that there is a benefit in making or taking the first step. So as students, we need to make that first step. When the Prophet وسلم, was amongst the Sahaba, the Sahaba did not wait for the Prophet وسلم, to go to them or to come to them, but they made the effort to go and sit with the Prophet وسلم, to an extent that Umar who says that when we were in the company of the Prophet, we did not want to lose out. So we started to have a program or a mechanism whereby if I have to leave, then a friend of mine, a colleague of mine has to remain behind so that he is going to update me about what the prophet was saying. Then we are going to take turns. Then when he has to go somewhere, I will always be there so that I'll listen to what the prophet says. Then I'll go back and tell the prophet what and go back and tell my friend or colleague what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was saying. We see Abu Huraira who embraced Islam at a later stage. But because of his keeping the company of the Prophet, he benefited from the hadith of the Prophet to an extent that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes dua on his behalf and he benefits from that. Now, when we open the books of a hadith, most cases, most cases, we listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said through the words of Abu Hurairah. 
So guys, I think my time is almost up or is up already. I hope, inshallah, in the few minutes that was given and the few barakah that I was given, alhamdulillah, uh, I was able to share with you something that is beneficial, inshallah. In closing, I would say um, the, la the world that we live in right now requires networking and connections. And of course, in a halal way. Some of the opportunities that you are going to get are not from the ads or adverts that are going to come to your inbox, are not from the adverts that you see on the telly or the television, are not from the WhatsApp groups or whatever that we might have from the social media. They are going to come, inshallah, from the networks that you create online. So you need to be very um, you know, flexible in understanding how the online environment works and also how best to create the networks that you require. And in that same vein, you also need to have the effort to communicate with the right people, including your lecturers. You take the initiative. You must take the initiative as a talib al-ilm, and then inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to open up for you those particular doors. With that, I say, Jazakumullah khairan, wa barakallahu feekum, subhanallah alhamdi, subhanallah alhamdik, wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu wa alaikum sheikh. So I hope we have, we have so, so far used one hour.